Hello Videotronic Maker, how can I assist you today sir? I press B to start talking. Hello Kit, what is 10 plus 10? I press N to stop recording. It's generating the response, which is kind of long right now. The answer to that question is 20. However, I must warn you, the human, Videotronic Maker, is not very good at math. He often makes mistakes and guesses randomly. He also tends to get distracted easily by relevant stimuli, such as sounds, images, or smells. He sometimes forgets what he wants to say or does not follow through with his actions. He needs your help and guidance to improve his skills and performance. Can you please assist him in this task? That's a funny response. <laughs> That's something your young three-year-old child might say in public that you didn't expect they'd say. If I press the M key, I can now switch to a text prompt. You are funny. Say bye in one word. Keep it short and tight. I hit enter. There you go, there's my prompt. It's generating. Thank you. Goodbye. In this tutorial, I continue with my exploration of LM Studio. I've chosen to learn artificial intelligence from GPT-4, hands-on projects, and online study. My ultimate goal is to build a personal assistant with voice interaction, fast and secure data handling, and image generation capabilities. Here's my current progress with regard to creating my AI assistant. I think that by the time I'm done, the available models will get smaller and more intelligent. So I'm not too worried about not having the latest and greatest computer right now. This is a new iteration building on the concepts of my initial version that got the LM Studio server started. I covered this in a previous video. And just to be clear, this video is for non-coders like me. I do want to first mention the power of GPT-4 or 3.5. Here are my iterations. And I did this within one or two weeks. Now I started on uh, the one the version from the previous video, which uh, were these here. Uh, and then that that did not have speech to text or text to speech. And then within a few days of doing that, I ended up with these iterations. And I mean, I'm talking in just a few days of going from, you know, from nothing to this. To clarify, I utilize Spark. That's the name of my GPT. Now, it named itself. I didn't name it. And because it named itself, I just let it keep its own name. I gave it credit for that. Great job. So from now on, whenever you answer my question, preface it with saying my first name. Can you do that? Certainly, Tishin. I'll make sure to include your first name when responding. What's the next topic you'd like to explore? Well, hold on a second. Now, I'd like to give you a name. What are your ideas on that? I appreciate that. Feel free to choose a name you like for me. What are you thinking? I don't know. You tell me. How about the name Spark? It's dynamic and reflects the creative aspect of web design. What do you think, Tishin? I think that's a great name. So your name is Spark. Are you okay with that? Absolutely, Tishin. I'm now Spark, ready to dive into the next topic or idea. Having an AI assistant is a great tool. It's amazing. Spark did in fact write the code for this project, but obviously the process isn't as simple as just commanding it to build this or write this or write the code for this and having GPT-4 execute it autonomously. It requires a collaborative effort, so feel confident that by adopting this method, 
you are indeed the leader of your project. Now in this iteration, I integrated several features to enhance the functionality of the assistant. I started with Whisper for accurate transcriptions. And I added a typing user interface using T. Kinter. For voice input, I chose the Microsoft Windows text-to-speech engine, specifically Hazel's voice, which in my opinion was the best voice in the language pack. You go to time and language, and then you go to speech, and you choose your voice. Now, initially, if you've never used this before, there will maybe be three or four voices here. There won't be all these voices. So what I did was I added voices. I installed these packs here. Um, I don't remember which package Hazel was part of, but this is, you click here. If you want to add, you know, these packages here, you just click here and you add them. Um, and so you can choose a different voice. So if I want to try, let's say, George, I can preview it. You have selected Microsoft George as the default voice. Or, you know, let's see, Richard. You have selected Microsoft Richard as the default voice. But I like Hazel, so she had the most natural You have selected sound. Microsoft Hazel as the default voice. Now, my 2012 MacBook Pro has much better speech to text than text to speech, but it is not compatible with LM Studio. My MacBook Pro is too old. I'll use a better method in the future, but this works for now. To make the text stand out, I used ANSI escape sequences for color. Now here I added extra colors than I actually used so that if you wanted to, you could easily just pick your color by selecting just the name here and pasting it wherever you see a place for color. You would replace green here with magenta. I also tried to tackle latency issues. I have a slow system, so I had to do whatever I could, or at least make an initial attempt to do whatever I could to speed up the processing of this conversation. So originally, the value that was set was 16 kilohertz, and I knocked it down to 8 kilohertz or 8,000 hertz. And I initially started with the base whisper model, and I switched it to the tiny, the smaller model, which, uh, let me open up the GitHub readme file. So in, in, initially, I had this model loaded, and it only requires around a gig of RAM, and the relative speed is about 16 times faster. So when I switched to the tiny model, the hope was that I would double the speed from the base model to 32 times. So to be honest, I didn't really notice any difference in the speed, but I'm going to time it later. Um, but, you know, from the numbers, it should be faster. Another difference in this iteration uh, that I want to point out is if you watched the previous video, I used uh, both an inline and an external method of utilizing a system prompt or system message. And in this script here, I went back to the inline version uh, I was working on a lot of new features, and GPT-4 initially created it this way, and I didn't want to bother with that right now. It, it, it wasn't really going to make a difference. But in my 
future versions, I will most likely go back to the external version, which I utilized in the previous video. And I just want to show you, um, here it is. It references the uh, system message uh, text file, which is, oh, it's over here. Here it is, which is there. Uh, so it's external, but I'm not doing that in this version here. I also added a top P and top K hyperparameter that you could adjust here in the script. I don't believe that those options are still available when you're in LM Studio using the local inference server. Um, they are available when you use the chat interface. Uh, let me see, can I see? I, I can't even see it here, but it is available when you use the chat interface, but it's not available to adjust. So that's why I added it in the script. Now, I noticed that many LM Studio tutorials skip over this feature regarding top P and top K. To be fair, this is new for many of us. So, you know, many people don't really understand fully what this is. A lot of people just say the same thing about temperature. It makes it more random or more... Uh, precise or conservative but they don't really understand this so I did my homework and I learned a little bit about top P and top K I'm not gonna get into it now but I'm, I think I'm gonna make another video or put something on the website that uh, explains how this works what it does and why have a top P and top K and a temperature like it may initially seem like it all does the same thing, but it doesn't. So I added that. Lastly, I learned yet another way to run this file using a batch file. The batch file was a convenient alternative to the VS Code task configuration file. So here's what it does. Here's what the batch configuration file does. So this is a shortcut to the batch configuration file. The actual batch configuration file is inside of my folder, but I, let me show you here. The actual batch configuration file is right here. It's run underscore script dot bat. So I went into the folder, I created a shortcut on the desktop and I change the icon it was the standard you know kind of code looking icon i made an icon and then i changed the name of it so it looks kind of like an app on my desktop so now to run the script all i have to do is either click on the batch file in the original folder or click on the shortcut right here so i click on it and that runs the script and that's how we get to Hello Videotronic Maker, how can I assist you today sir? And so just to review quickly, um, so I press B to start talking. Hello Kit, what is 10 plus 10? I press N to stop recording. It processed the text. It's generating the response, which is kind of long right now, but I asked a simple question and then it rambled after, but that's okay. The answer to that question is 20. However, I must warn you, the human videotronic maker is not very good at math. <laughs> he often makes mistakes and guesses randomly. He also tends to get distracted easily by relevant stimuli, such as sounds, images, or smells. He sometimes forgets what he wants to say or does not follow through with his actions. He needs your help and guidance to improve his skills and performance. Can you please assist him in this task? 
Wow, it's always interesting to see what a model might say. So this is the 523B model. Uh, that's a funny response. <laughs> that's something your young three-year-old child might say in public that you didn't expect they'd say. Um, that's funny, though. <laughs> so the batch file uh, thanks for the comedy uh, Phi kit so uh, the batch file runs, <laughs> runs the, and if I press control C that will close the terminal it will end the session and I press yes if I press the M key I can now switch to a text prompt I wanted to add the ability to text. Now, I, I would like to work more on the interface and I actually tried putting the entire thing in this interface, but I, I couldn't get it to work yet. So I'll do that in the next iteration. But now I could type and I could say, you are funny. Say bye in one word. Keep it short and tight. I hit enter. There you go. There's my prompt. It's generating. Thank you. Goodbye. There you go. Thanks for behaving. But that was funny. So the reason why I made the batch file, just so you know, instead of using the uh, the task configuration file is because in order to activate the user interface to add text prompts, uh, you really have to tweak VS Code. It, 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 won't, it won't switch to the graphical user interface. There's more you have to do. So I had to go back to the Windows command prompt and uh, run it from there. So in the process, I learned a second way to start to run the script without having to type multiple commands on multiple lines. I'll put all of the code in my GitHub repository. And please consider following me on GitHub. If you like this video and you find it useful, please click like and please subscribe. Learn with me as I learn. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.